guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Now today, I'm going to do a segment I haven't done in a little while. And that is, I'm going to talk about the five things I love about my Seiko SKX. Now of course, customary wristwatch check, I am wearing the SKX in honor of this video. And uh, it's a watch that's by no means anywhere near the most expensive piece in my collection. It's probably one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, but it is a watch that I love dearly and gets a ton of wrist time, probably in my top three or four watches that I wear the most, and I've totally fallen in love with it. Now, today I'm going to talk about the five things I love about it, but it's not a perfect watch, so stick around for the top five things I hate about the SKX, that is video I'm gonna do a little bit further down the road. Now, of course, if you guys wanna buy a Seiko SKX like this one or the black bezel, take a look in the description below. I've put a couple of Amazon affiliate links. I bought my SKX on Amazon, and if you click the link below and buy it that way, you're also helping out the channel because I get a little percentage of the sale. So that way you guys can get a watch you like, and of course, you're supporting Federico Talks watches. And also, before we get started, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, that's at Federico Talks Watches. I'm putting up the Q&A picture tomorrow. That way you guys can drop a question on the picture and I'll answer it in my Q&A segment. This is the only way you guys can participate in the Q&A is through my Instagram. So a link will be put in the description as well. Take a look, don't judge me too much for my photography skills. I can barely work a camera. Anyway, fellas, let's get right into it and talk about the top five things I love about my Seiko SKX. And by the way, this is the Seiko SKX 175. It's the same as the 009. Uh, the only difference is it's made for the American market, and it says made in Malaysia on the bottom. But apart from that, it is identical. So the first thing I love about the SKX is the reliability of the movement. It uses the Workhorse 7S26 Seiko in-house movement, which is, of course, automatic. Now, it's not the perfect movement, and I'll talk about that in the other video, but it is very, very reliable. I mean, there's a ton of cases out there where this movement, um, of course, doesn't need servicing for 20, 25 years. A lot of people talk about that. It's got a day-date complication. It beats at 21,600 beats per hour. And of course, it's automatic. So you know what? For the price range of this watch, which is about $200 to $250, it's a perfectly fine workhorse automatic. Japanese reliability, and you can say it's in-house. Not the most glamorous, but... That's what you want a workhorse watch to be. That's what you want a beater watch to be, is reliable. And the 7S26 offers that in spades. The second thing I love about my SKX, looking at it a little bit, is the dial color. I love that deep blue look. I love the hour markers. It's very, very unique. It's a little bit Spartan. You know, the, the hour markers aren't outlined in white gold or in any metal. Um, but, you know, it looks like a dive watch. It's got unique shapes for those markers, and that deep blue, almost verging on black, has got a ton of personality. I also love the orange little bit of text. Now, this, of course, is very subjective, but I definitely love the dial. It's highly legible and perfect for a diver, while also offering no frills and a very utilitarian look, something I really appreciate about the SKX. And of course, the third thing I love about my SKX is the case. It's 42 millimeters, high polished. It's the perfect size for me. It wears a little bit small for a 42, but that's cool because I think it has kind of a vintage aesthetic. The case is rounded edges and no sharpness to the, to the touch. And it's got that unique crown at 430, which is very, very different. So it's a utilitarian case with a ton of personality. I kind of really like that about the SKX. Now, I don't love the lug width, which is 22 millimeters, but once again, this is the loves video, not the hates video, but the case is pretty much almost perfect. And I absolutely love that about this particular watch. Now, the fourth thing is something that not everybody really cares about, but I've mentioned it in quite a few of my love and hate videos, and that is the case back. I love that Seiko took the time to decorate the case back on this watch, especially since it's a very inexpensive piece. It features the famous Kanagawa Japanese wave, which is, you know, 
pretty iconic in artwork, and it's very, very Japanese. It's a very smooth case back. It protrudes slightly, but since it's smooth, it's not uncomfortable, and it gives you a little something interesting to look at. It's utilitarian, because it doesn't have a see-through case back, but it's not as Spartan as, say, a sub. So I do like that extra little bit of detail that Seiko engraved, or, you know, maybe rather embossed on the case back. And of course, the fifth thing, and I know I'm going to get a little bit of flack for this, is the bracelet. Now, the bracelet is arguably one of the worst parts about this watch, but me personally, I love this Jubilee bracelet. It's hollow and links, it's very rattly, it's not a very well-made bracelet, but I love the feeling. It reminds me of kind of like those vintage Rolex GMT bracelets. It's a very simple clasp, uh, it kind of moves around, and actually, if I show you guys, there's a ton of stretch to it, but all that means is it's very, very comfortable. Yes, it does not feel super premium, and everybody puts them, or, the mo or most people put them, on aftermarket bracelets, but I kept the original. I think it's part of the charm of the watch. And those are the five things I love about my SKX. And as I said, I've got a ton of more expensive watches in my collection, but this just always finds its way on my wrist. I love the way it feels. I love the way it looks. It's reliable. It just kind of makes me happy. And it goes to show you guys, it's not all about luxury watches because I definitely don't consider this a luxury watch, but I'm a watch lover. And even though, yes, I have a tendency and I definitely always think I'm going to stick to mainly high-end Swiss and high-end German, uh, I do have an appreciation for the SKX. I mean, it's an iconic dive watch. It's a design that everybody knows, especially if you love horology, and it just brings a smile to my face. It fits in great with the beach. In fact, I wear it all the time to Miami. And, you know, it also looks decent in a suit, even though it's probably not the primary place I'd wear one. If you want to see a full review of the SKX, I'll leave a link right up top because I have made one before, and you can look at it a little bit more in depth. But for $220, $230, it's a hell of a watch. And it's a mainstay because I know a lot of other watch geeks have it in their collection, and I totally understand why. I don't think I'll be getting rid of this anytime soon. A, because I probably won't make any money if I sell it. B, it's not gonna cost much, if anything, to service it because the movement is so reliable and it's gonna be at least 20 years before I touch it, you know, fingers crossed. And you know what? I'm always gonna find a reason to wear one, be it because I don't wanna wear an expensive watch because I'm on vacation somewhere, uh, you know, where I don't wanna wear an expensive watch or if I'm at the beach. It just suits many, many purposes. And I think this is a great way to show that even if you're a lover of high-end horology, there's certainly a place to have a Seiko diver. And I don't know why I'm saying this, because I know a ton of you guys agree with me. Anyway, guys, what are your five favorite loves of the Seiko SKX? Leave a comment in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss the five things I hate about the Seiko SKX, because as I said, it is not a perfect watch. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking around for another episode of Federico Talks Watches, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.